아, 예. 안녕하세요. 저는 예, 이기국이라고 하고요. 어, 저 발표는 그 예, 앞에 하셨던 것처럼 저 영어로 할 건데 뭐 질문은 뭐 한국말로 해 주셔도 예, 괜찮습니다. 그럼 저 예, 한국말로 대답을 해 드리면 될 거고 뭐 영어로 질문하시면 뭐 영어로 대답을 하 예, 하도록 하겠습니다. Uh, in this presentation, I'd like to talk about uh, my paper uh, published in this CVPR, Hierarchical Novel Detection for Visual Object Recognition. And this is a joint, uh, so I'm Kim Lee from University of Michigan, and this is a joint work with uh, Kim Lee, Kyle Min, Yu Ting Zhang, uh, Jin Xin, and Hong Lak Di. So, yep. First, I'd like to uh, give you some intuition why this uh, hierarchical novel detection is beneficial. Uh, I mean, it's why it is more beneficial than conventional novel detection task. So, yeah, simply speaking, the conventional novel detection framework uh, does not provide more information than a novelty of an object. So let me give you an example. So suppose we have uh, some training classes like this, some cat and dog images. And here are some uh, test images. So as you can see, most of them are unseen during training. The uh, Angora cat, Dachshund, and Pika, they are uh, not seen uh, during training. So if we apply the conventional novel detection method, then the best uh, output we can get is just novel. For these uh, novel images, the best result we can get is just the novelty of an object. But uh, with the help of the uh, hierarchical taxonomy, uh, which can be obtained by a kind of linguistic knowledge like uh, WordNet, uh, we can get more informative uh, results like novel cat or novel dog or even novel animal. So, yeah, so in this uh, work, so our hierarchical novel detection framework uh, aims to find the most specific class label of any data existing in the world uh, with the help of the hierarchical taxonomy uh, built with known labels. And uh, we expect that this kind of framework can be potentially useful for some uh, practical application uh, when we'd like to organize a customized taxonomy and there would be some novel categories comes in later. So yeah, for example, a, if we'd like to build a company's product uh, catalog, then new customer product would be an example of novel categories. And if we are doing wild monitoring, then new uh, unregistered animal species would be an example of novel categories. And if we are gonna, if we'd like to build a personal photo library, then yeah, some untagged scenes or uh, place images can be a candidate of novel categories. Uh, yeah. Okay. So in the next section, do you, I'd like to describe our hierarchical taxonomy. Uh, so there are three types of classes in our uh, hierarchical taxonomy. So the first type is non leaf classes. They are seen during training. And their ancestors are super classes, and they are also known. And yeah, novel classes are unseen during training. And even at the test time, we don't know the exact label of the novel classes. So instead, we'd like to find the closest super class in the taxonomy instead. So that would be the most useful information based uh, in our knowledge. Okay, and here are some um, yeah, notations. Uh, let's yeah, look at some examples one by one. So this is our uh, taxonomy T, taxonomy of known classes. And L of T is the set of uh, all known leaf classes. And uh, yeah, if we set uh, this node to be Y, then uh, P of Y would be the set of our parents. Uh, and note that there would be multiple parents Oh, in the case, our taxonomy will be not a tree, but a yeah, tag, a direct uh, cyclic graph. And yeah, C of Y is the uh, set of children. And N of Y is the set of novel classes, where uh, its closest uh, superclass would be Y. And O of Y is the uh, exclusive classes. Uh, so simply speaking, uh, they are just the all known classes except the classes under Y. And finally, A of Y is the all the ancestors of Y. So mathematically, yeah, y, it's just the uh, union of Y and P of Y and P of P of Y and something like that. So yeah, now we are uh, ready to yeah, look at the approaches we propose in this uh, work. So the first approach is uh, top-down method. 
this is uh, somewhat very simple. So it does just simple multi-stage classification. And one termination condition is the case when the prediction arrives at a non-leaf class. So let me give you an example. So starting from the root class, it does some classification. So now, as you can see, this uh, node on the right-hand side has the largest uh, probability. So the, pro the pro uh, prediction uh, goes down to that class. And it does another classification. And as you can see, now it arrives at a non-leaf class. Then the classification ends. And the uh, final predicted label is this uh, non-leaf class. And there's another termination condition, which is uh, the case when the classification result is unconfident, which means the uh, predicted label is novel. So here's another example. So at this stage, if the prediction is unconfident, which means uh, the uh, output probabilities are evenly distributed, then you know in this case, uh, uh, none of them are a kind of a right answer. But so we can say, uh, if the prediction is unconfident like this, then we, uh, we can stop the classification at the time and just uh, classify it as a novel class under that uh, super class. So based on this idea, we can construct a classification rule mathematically like this. So if the classification result is confident enough, then just we uh, propagate down the appropriate label to the appropriate uh, yeah, ch known child, which has the maximum predicate probability. And if the classification is not confident, then the classification uh, stops at the stage, and the, the predicted label is the known, uh, sorry, novel class under that super class. And the confidence can be measured by uh, the KL divergence from the uniform distribution to the predictive distribution. And also, yeah, an intuitive example would be, um, so yeah, if this, KL levels uh, will be maximized if uh, the prediction is very obvious. Like, suppose we have three unknown child, child then uh, yeah, one zero zero or zero one zero, something like that. So they are somewhat obvious uh, classification results. So in in the case this KL divergence is maximized, then we can say it's confident. And if the predict yeah, predicted the probabilities are evenly distributed, like one third, one third, one third. Then uh, this scale, scale divergence is minimized. Then we can say the classification uh, result is unconfident. So we have some threshold lambda s, and of course, yeah, this can be uh, chosen by some validation. Okay, so here's our training objective. So this is just uh, yeah, not very difficult. So the first term. And the second term, they are from the yeah, classification rule. So the first term is just the uh, standard uh, cross entropy loss. And the second term, so this one is KL divergence. Uh, yeah, so this one is uh, added to train a confidence calibrated classifier. But of course, we don't have novel class data during training. So instead, we borrow some data from the exclusive classes. So, you know, if you uh, want to train a uh, cat classifier, but if the, some dog images comes in, then the expected output would be, yeah, okay, uh, the cl classifier doesn't know about the answer because it doesn't expect to get that kind of uh, input. So in the case, uh, the expected output would be just uh, unconfident. So yeah, in this sense, uh, it makes some sense. And actually, it helps to train the uh, confidence calibrated classifier. And it helps to detect the novelty of an object at the stage. So yeah, I just described the first approach uh, we propose. And the next approach is a flattened method. And here, the idea is to represent all the probabilities uh, of or classifiable candidates, non leaf classes and novel classes in a single probability vector. So conceptually, we can add virtual novel classes under each superclass and then flatten the structure like this. We can just ignore the, all the hierarchy and just uh, we can have uh, all non leaf classes and novel classes in a single uh, long probability vector. So if we have this kind of probability vector, our classification rule is really simple. We can do just one, st yeah, one stage classification. But again, the, here the problem is we don't have uh, tra training data for novel classes. So we propose two strategies to train this model. 
So I'm going to use this taxonomy to give you an example. So the first uh, strategy is uh, hierarchical data relabeling. Here the idea is to fill novel classes by hierarchical data relabeling, uh, like this and like this. So here uh, we remove some specificity of some label. For example, we move some Persian cat to uh, some general cat or general animal to train those uh, classes. Of course, this labeling is strictly speaking incorrect because they have more a specific label, Persian cat, but they are somewhat useful to train some general cat or general animal classes because they have some yeah, shared features. I mean, yeah, if you train a general cat with some known yeah, a Persian cat and Siamese cat, then they are somewhat helpful to uh, extract some general feature of a general cat and yeah, actually, yeah, this model yeah, works reasonably well if you look at the experimental uh, results. And again, yeah, of course, the relabeling rate can be chosen by validation. And our training objective is yeah, yet uh, really simple. So we can train a standard uh, cross entropy loss. And another more sophisticated strategy is uh, called the leave on out strategy. And here, the idea is to generate deficient taxonomies by removing some class from the uh, taxonomy. So we call this method leave on out because uh, we uh, remove one class from the taxonomy to generate deficient taxonomies. And we collect all the deficient taxonomies and use them to train the model. So here's an example. Suppose we choose a cat and we'd like to remove cat from the taxonomy. Then, in our deficient taxonomy, uh, T minus A, uh, then we have no cat uh, class anymore, and all the images under a cat becomes novel animal. So in this way, yeah, we can train novel animal class, and yeah, we can do the same thing for all classes. So by collecting all these cases, we can build up a yeah, training objective like this. So there are two terms. The first term is standard uh, softmax, uh, I mean, softmax uh, cross entropy loss over all known classes. And the second term is the cross entropy, cross -entropy uh, loss over all deficient taxonomies. OK, and yeah, we also uh, propose to combine those two models, top down and flatten method. Uh, how to do this? Uh, we, we can first compute the output of a uh, top down model, and then we can concatenate all the output of top down model and feed it to uh, our flatten model. So why we are doing this? So the rationale behind this idea is that uh, we can uh, utilize the uh, benefits of both models. So there are some adva advantages and disadvantages of each model. So for example, in our top-down method, uh, it leverages some hierarchical structure information by nature because it does a multi-stage classification. But it suffers from error aggregation over hierarchy while our flat method uh, does not have such uh, ish issue, uh, it does not suffer from error aggregation. But here, uh, it doesn't leverage the hierarchical structure information at all because it just flattened the architecture. The way to leverage the two yeah, complementary benefits is yeah, just to compute the output of uh, top-down model first. And the output of top-down model would have some uh, contains some uh, hierarchical structure information. And by feeding the yeah, output of the top down model into our uh, flattened model, yeah, we can do one, yeah, one st stage classification. So by doing this, we can also avoid the error aggregation issue. And yeah, so let's look at some experimental results. So here are our main uh, experimental results. So the la last row is our combined method, and as you can see, our combined method uh, outperforms the other uh, method. And of course, yeah, I'm going to uh, explain about this table. Uh, so they are compared algorithms. So here we set our baseline, uh, the start algorithm. So actually, so this uh, hierarchical novelty detection task is proposed in uh, this uh, work first time. So there's no true uh, baseline method. but the Dart me uh, method does similar thing. Uh, actually, yeah, it does some uh, yeah, reward maximization. But yeah, anyway, so we adapt. Yeah, we adapt this method to do this uh, task, and we set this method as baseline. 
and the others are relabeling our method, the leave on our method, and our combined method are compared. And here we don't compare our top down method because uh, yeah, it doesn't have very good performance because of the error aggregation. And data sets. So ImageNet would be the most interesting data set. So yeah, it consists of uh, 1,000 known classes, uh, which are commonly used uh, in the uh, image classification task. And the other are used, for, uh, used as uh, novel classes. So actually, there are about uh, 20,000 classes in the whole ImageNet data set, but we uh, ignore some classes so, because they don't have enough train, uh, test data. Uh, we'd like to do some uh, reliable uh, classification. And the others, animals with attribute and CU birds, so they are relatively small data set, and they have some taxonomies, so we can uh, test them as well. And we propose two metrics to measure this uh, hierarchical novelty detection performance. So the first one is novel class accuracy, uh, when the novel known class accuracy is 50%. So to get this number, uh, we, we added some appropriate score bias to all novel class. Uh, so you know, uh, if we, once we get some probability vector uh, for all known classes and novel classes, we can manually add some uh, score or probability bias to all known novel classes to increase or decrease our novel class accuracy. And by adjusting the bias, uh, we also obtain the area under that curve. So here, I'm going to yeah, show you the actual curves we used to gen yeah, get the numbers. So our, uh, yeah, we use uh, to obtain the novel class accuracy. So we can just draw a line like this and read the uh, y-coordinate values. And to obtain the area under curve, uh, it's just we can uh, compute the area under curve. Okay, and let's look at some qualitative results. So here is an actual uh, test example, come from American Foxhound class, which, are, which is uh, never before seen during training. So yeah, still, uh, we don't know the uh, true label, I mean, exact label of this image, so we in instead uh, try to predict the most specific uh, label in the taxonomy, which is Foxhound. Here are the prediction results of uh, our compared method. And here are some uh, hierarchical relationship among the predicted labels and ground truth. So, yeah, our ground truth is Foxhound, and two of our proposed method, uh, LOO, and our combined method predict the label correctly, while the uh, uh, other proposed method predicted to uh, Hound, which is a parent of Foxhound. So it's not very different from the uh, ground truth, but strictly speaking, is incorrect. And our baseline method, darts, predicted as beagle. So yeah, as you can see, if you're not familiar with dog species, then oh, yeah, all of them uh, somewhat make sense. But yeah, we are doing some yeah classification test. We'd, uh, I'd like to just uh, yeah make it as precise as possible. So if the classification result is not on Foxhound, just I just count them as uh, wrong. And here are some other uh, qualitative results. So it's the case when the novel class image is from Zorobo. And yeah, when the novel class images come from Song Thrush. And when the image is from Ice Cream Sunday. So yeah, as you can see, this task is really um, difficult. And if you see the predicted label, uh, they are somewhat uh, meaningful. I mean. They are not totally wrong. The, yeah, by just looking at this image, you can say the, yeah, pre, they are uh, some food, or they are some ice cream, or they are some dessert. So yeah, they are somewhat meaningful. But yeah, to measure the uh, yeah, quantitative performance, we just uh, yeah, restricted the ground truth as just one label. So this would be this kind of um, yeah, metric would be investigated in future work. So let's look at the another uh, experimental result. Uh, we also applied our method to generalize zero-shell learning task. So uh, yeah, so this yeah, this is not our main uh, experiment. So I'm not gonna explain the detail of this task, but 
uh, I can say this is another line of work that does similar thing. I mean, it tries to classify some Im images never before seen during training. So as you can see, the numbers in these blue columns shows the best number in most cases. And again, I'm gonna just explain this table. So uh, we combine the three symmetric embeddings. So attributes are some numeric attri attribute values. So for example, uh, uh, whiteness of an object can be an example. So for example, an object is from a polar bear class, then its whiteness would be very high. And if the image is brown bear, then the whiteness would be relatively small. So that kind of number can be uh, scored, say ranges from zero to 10, for example. And word vector, so it's a similarity among words in real coordinate space. So it can be extracted from large text corpus. To, and yeah, we, so word, word to vec where glove would be a popular method to extract word vectors, and we used glove for this experiment. And hierarchy embedding, so this, uh, yeah, this embedding is, yeah, so we uh, compare the two hierarchy embeddings. So our baseline is called uh, pass embedding, which is proposed in this uh, Zainab's, uh, sorry, the Professor Zainab Akata's uh, paper. And yeah, in this uh, embedding, uh, it measures the distance between classes on hierarchy. And our purpose, in our purpose method, top-down embedding, uh, so we organize the embedding by extracting the output of our top-down model. So I'm not gonna show you the detail, but if you're interested in this experiment, please uh, yeah, read our paper, Appendix D. I just add an example, uh, a real example of this uh, embedding. And data sets, uh, we used animals with attributes and CU bird data set. And metrics, they are pretty, pretty much similar to the, uh, the ones used in the uh, hierarchical of detection. So unseen class accuracy for zero shot learning and area under seen and unseen curve for generalized uh, zero shot learning task. So in this curve, yeah, unseen class accuracy can be measured by just reading the number in this line. And generalized zero shot learning uh, performance can be measured by just yeah co computing the area on the curve. Okay, so conclusion. So in this work, uh, we propose a hierarchical novelty detection framework, and it aims to find the most specific class label of any data existing in the world uh, with the help of the uh, hierarchy of known labels. And we propose two approaches. The f our top-down method performs classification and novelty detection hierarchically and our flattened method computes a single probability vector of all candidate classes to avoid error aggregation issue. And their combination takes advantage of their complementary benefits. And yeah, as a side work, yeah, we applied our model to another task, similar task, general, generalized zero learning task, and we, uh, yeah, we saw that yeah, it can improve the performance. Okay, so this is the end of uh, my presentation. Thank you for your attention, and if you have any question, uh, please uh, ask me. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Mm -hmm. I got a question on, uh, regarding your framework. I mean, how many hierarchical depths can it, it can make? Uh, sorry, uh, how many hierarchical what? Dep depths? I mean, sub depths, uh, sub trees, or oh yeah. So in so in the ImageNet, uh, the uh, so the depth of the image net is 20, and uh, uh, animals with attribute and CU bird, they have uh, more shallow depths. And I'm not sure, but yeah, at least the 20 would be deep enough. So I think it would cover, it can cover all the uh, classes in the world. I mean, you know, the root class of the image net is object, so general object. So it already covers all objects. So at least for the visual object recognition, I think. Uh, yeah, depths of 20 would be enough, and yeah, it can cover all the uh, hierarchy, hierarchy of existing objects in the world. Uh, so does this answer to your question, or? Thanks. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have a question about the uh, confidence score. Uh, you use KL divergence between the uniform distribution and your model distribution. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So is there any distinct advantage of using the KL divergence over entropy? Oh, uh, KL divergence and what? Sorry. So for the confidence score, mm -hmm. you use the KL divergence between a uniform distribution right. and your model distribution, mm -hmm. right? So is there a distinct reason why you used KL instead of entropy? Uh, instead of uh, which number, sorry? Instead of the entropy of your model distribution. Oh, actually, this KL divergence is equivalent to the entropy. If you yeah, ex expand the uh, equation, it's yeah, really equivalent to the entropy. So this scale divergence is nothing but just entropy plus some constant. Well, well the constant is the relative entropy, right? So, uh, so scale divergence is cross entropy minus uh, entropy. So you're essentially you're trying to minimize the entropy of your distribution while is maximizing the cross entropy between the uniform distribution and your mm -hmm. model distribution. Well, actually, they are equivalent. I mean, so there are some constant, but they can be ignored during training. So when you are setting the, OK. So yeah, this term is actually the entropy plus some constant, and during training, the constants can be just ignored, so they, it doesn't affect, affect to training. It's, a, it's not a constant, right? It's the oh, yeah, cross-entropy between the uniform and your distribution. So if you were to just try to minimize entropy, mm -hmm. that's slightly different from minimizing entropy in addition to maximizing cross-entropy between oh, the uniform. Oh, no, they, they are the same. So I don't know why you think they are different, but Right, so, so, so the KL is mm -hmm. uh, cross entropy mm -hmm. minus entropy, mm -hmm. right? So the cross entropy between your uniform distribution mm -hmm. and your model distribution is not a constant. That's also being optimized when you try to maximize your KL. Oh, so this term uniform distribution is constant when, you tra uh, when we train this model. So this uh, uniform distribution can be determined by just the, the number of classes. So if you have uh, three classes in your class, then it has some fixed value for each class, one third, one third, one third. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, if you expand this uh, term uh, in terms of some yeah, numbers and logs, and just if you just arrange the terms, then you can find that it's just really the same with the entropy of this probability distribution plus some constant. Oh, maybe uh, we can. Okay. Let, yeah, this. let's chat about it more oh, yeah, uh, yeah. offline. Yeah, maybe uh, you can try to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Thanks. Just, yeah. Thanks for the presentations. And mm -hmm. I have two questions. One question is that I'm wondering that we can apply both techniques, uh, top-down method and flattened mm -hmm. method, mm -hmm. uh, simultaneously, not successively. What do you think about it? Uh, simultaneously. Um. Yeah, that's a good question. Let me think. Um. Yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah, we can try this, but yeah, we've never tried yeah in that way. So yeah, that's an yeah, interesting comment. Yeah, maybe yeah, I can try it later. Yeah, okay, I could yeah, be thanks. an author. Yeah. author. Yeah, thanks for your <laughs> suggestion. Okay, and another question is that uh, could you show me the graphs uh, compared to darts on ImageNet data set? Um, graph? Yes, graph. Um, the comparing graphs, the number class accuracy versus known class accuracy. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. So yeah, here's this one, right? Yes. Um, I'm wondering that uh, if we have the known class accuracy more than 0 0.7, then the DART seems to show the better result than your methods. Oh, yeah, yeah and right. Could you, could you show me the reason? Or I th I'm just wondering about we can uh, combine together with DART, we can show the better result with your method. Mm, mm. Yeah, so our metric is the point uh, at the point at the known class accuracy is 50% where we measure the area on the curve. So our method some sacrifices some known class accuracy like this. But by nature, the uh, yeah, darts uh, compute the score based on the uh, mm -hmm. classification score from the standard uh, classifier. I mean, if you have 1,000 cl uh, classes, then it first extracts uh, 1,000 uh, scores and then it just merges the scores to generate the score for novel classes. That's why, uh, yeah, it has the best uh, known class accuracy. It doesn't it doesn't harm to the known class accuracy at all by nature. But we we train the classifier uh, in our proposed method, so that's why it just decreases the performance a little bit. But yeah, overall it performs better if we think about the novel classes and. Uh, I don't know. Actually, I didn't try to yeah, combine the other method. Um, yeah, that would be also interesting uh, way to improve the performance. 
but I'm, yeah, maybe, yeah. Okay, I can try it later. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, so is there a rationale behind comparing KL divergence between uniform distribution, like, you know, assumption that the uh, distribution of the cl subclasses are mm -hmm. uh, almost the same in your data set? Or is there approach to, to deal with some kind of biased uh, classified data set? Or uh, can you uh, share your ideas about it? Um, so what do you mean by bias? Um, what uh, kind of bias you know, are you're you comparing uh, the distribution between uniform. Uh -huh. uh, so is there a rationale behind it? Uh, so just intuitively speaking, uh, if the classification uh, result is not confident, then it do doesn't want to uh, go to the downside. I mean, if, uh, so maybe earlier slide would be more helpful, okay. So, so, for, uh, so in this example, so first you are testing a dog classifier, and if the test image is cat, then in this case, uh, the class, uh, our, uh, we don't want to classify it to uh, Pomeranian or West Corgi and the other, and even, uh, oh, sorry, that would be an in appropriate example, sorry. So, so if the Dachshund images comes in into the dog classifier, then uh, it, yeah, it is not Pomeranian, uh, and it's also not a Welsh Corgi. So in this case, uh, so some expected output would be uh, one half, one half, because we are, uh, so actually we are using softmax based uh, classification model. So if, you, if we use sigmoid based model, then the expected output, output would be zero, zero. But since we are using softmax based uh, classification model, the expected output is one, yeah, half and half here. So that's the, some, yeah, yeah, the primary intuition behind this idea. So yeah, so depending on your uh, classification model, the, yeah, confidence can be measured in a different way. But yeah, since we, again, yeah, since we are using softmax based classification, so the summation over all the uh, candidates should be one. So in this case, I think the evenly distributed probability would be somewhat, um, yeah, somewhat makes sense, yeah. So that's why we are using, yeah, the kind of confidence model. If the prior distributions are, you know, heavily biased toward one classification, you know, one class of, Objects, then should should you use different distribution? Oh, uh, sorry, could, could you could you ask me? Like you know, sometimes there can be a very very uh, rare uh, classes labels. So, mm. like like Pomer uh, Pomeranian and Welsh Corgi might be uh, very high in densities. Uh -huh. So if uh, if you want to classify a object that comes really rare. Uh, occasions. So, how mm -hmm. do you deal with that kind of situation? So, yeah. Anyway, so yeah. At this stage, the uh, classification problem is just the standard novelty detection, and the difference from the uh, standard novelty detection is we are doing multi-stage classification. And uh, I don't know whether this that kind of uh, where really the density of the training uh, data set uh, is really important or not. So we just uh, balanced the. Uh, Data set in this case, but um, so I don't know. So, so, so could you could you ask me your question more specifically? Okay, so, I'll ask you offline. Oh, okay, I see. Thank you. After this talk. So by the uh, top, uh, we top down approach and at all leave one out. Uh, is there any probabilities of um, plotting all the sub nodes by at all? So by the taxonomy, it makes hierarchical uh, sub trees, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if we Utilize LO. Uh -huh. Is there any uh, possibilities like deleting all the sub nodes to the top recursively? Uh, you mean so you want to apply leave on out in the middle of the top down classification? Or yeah, so it, uh, also, yeah, that would be a good way to combine two methods, but the problem is um, it makes the classification even more complicated and uh, it still suffers from error aggregation, you know. Once we have multi-stage classification, then, uh, so, so yeah, as I just said, the so image that, for example, has um, depth 20, so it does 20 uh, classification, and uh, even one uh, stage ha uh, pr pr uh, produces some wrong answer, then the whole classification just uh, produces wrong classification results. So I think, uh, I think, uh, we have, 
it is good to just avoid multi-stage classification. Yeah, thank you.